We are on the train, we're heading to Fleet Pond and we're going to go to the area north of Fleet Pond which is like a big open area with fields and stuff. Going to try and see if there's any cool wildlife there. Not really too sure what to expect, we've only been there, well I've been there once before. Um, I'm here with Sue as well, she's been here twice. <laughs> Don't forget there's a subscribe button down below, hit that to make sure you're notified of my future videos. And I have a feeling this is going to be a good one, so let's see what happens. Yeah, so we're at Fleet Pond. You can see the pond behind me. Oh yeah, there's one. Oh, there are two. Okay, I need to get my camera out. So we've been in this area a little while now. It's still a bit sunny, but there's some cloud cover as well. So we're kind of getting some quite nice soft light at the moment. I've seen a few birds so far, nothing amazing. Um, I think a woodpecker was probably the most interesting one and a kestrel, but uh, didn't get any good shots. But we're moving on to the next area now. And there are like, imagine like two fields next to each other and in between fields are like a long line of trees and bushes. And there's kind of like a path going in between all the trees and bushes that we're going to take. And last time we did it, it was already quite tricky. This time it's going to be even more overgrown. So let's go and see if we can actually make it through there. But if we can, we'll make it up to, I think, the next area, the next field, um, where it opens out a bit more. And I don't know, we'll see what we see when we get there. So yeah, let's go. When I look at you now, an adrenaline rush We're always looking for something more And we're closer to the edge than ever before I can't believe this body is fine I'm outside It doesn't make any sense This was not how I saw the end But I keep on breathing Heart is beating I'm waiting for You can just do it with your long legs, it's funny. Alright, so we did make it through that section. We're now on the other side and heading to the next area, which is across the M3. You can just about hear the rumble of the M3 in the background. In fact, it's kind of been there the whole time, but now we're getting a bit closer. And when I say crossing the M3, it is a bridge. We're not going to literally cross the M3 like a normal road. That would be crazy. I think Sue has seen something. So I think what Sue spotted in the bushes there was a vole. She could just about see it. There was something under the leaves moving. Um, I couldn't see anything from where I was, but what I did hear was some rustling in the bushes over to this side. And I think in the end it was just two blackbirds on the ground sort of turning up the leaves and probably looking for food. 
Um, but then I saw one bird flying around in the bushes and landing and staying there. And you can kind of tell the way robins fly, that it's like they'll sit and look at you. It was in kind of deep shade because it was in the bushes, so I dropped the shutter speed way down on my camera to 1 one twenty-fifth of a second. Got a few shots, there was one in particular where it was sharp and it was looking at me. I was going to drop my shutter speed even lower down to 1 60th, but it flew off after that. But uh, I, it's quite a nice picture, I think. The I think I got the eye sharp. It's a little bit noisy, but it was in kind of deep shade. So um, yeah, check it out. This is a baby robin, fledgling. So one of my viewers, Zitram, says, can't you go through your camera settings in any video? New follower from Sweden. Yeah, thanks Zitram. So that is a great point. Um, the trouble is usually I'm out taking tons of photos. I don't really know until I get back and look at the pictures on my monitor, which ones are going to be good. But you're right, I should really look at my pictures more and try and decide a bit more when I'm out, which ones I'm going to use. And then I can also go through some of the settings when I'm actually talking about them as well. So I'll try and do that more. Um, so for the picture I just took, which was of the Robin, I think I said the shutter speed was 1 1 25th. It's with the 500mm PF on normal VR mode. Wide open at f5.6, which is pretty much always for me, and ISO 1600, white balance cloudy. I, sh I use auto ISO, so the only things I'm ever controlling are the aperture, which is pretty much always wide open anyway, and uh, the shutter speed. So I'll just vary the shutter speed depending on how good the light is, how confident I am about hand holding. But yeah, 1 1 25th with this lens and body seems to work really well and produce really sharp images. Sometimes I'll even go lower, 1 60th. All right, on to the next area. Just going over the M3, it's really noisy. But down there, you can just about see the other bridge. When we come back, we'll be crossing on that bridge. So we're doing kind of like a big loop. So there are quite a few of these butterflies around and I'm not really a macro photography specialist or anything, but I'll go over sort of how I'm approaching it with my camera settings. And basically I'll stand back a bit so that my lens can actually focus. Because with like a 500mm lens like this, the minimum focus distance is actually quite far away. It's like three meters or a bit less than three meters. Um, but because it's 500 millimeters, it's still quite big in the frame. We're in bright sunlight and there's wind and the butterflies blowing around in the wind in this particular case. So I'm bumping up my shutter speed to about 1 500th. And um, because it's sunny, I, I can afford to drop my aperture, uh, raise my aperture up a bit to f8, just to help a bit with depth of field as well, because it's um, your depth of field is so narrow when you're close to minimum focus distance that even the butterfly will be half in and half out of focus. So F8 helps solve that a little bit. Um, and yeah, then just a case of pointing the camera, pointing a single point in the center right at the back of the butterfly and just taking a few shots, looking at the back screen of the camera, punching in, checking it sharp. If it's not, try again. Do that a few times and uh, hopefully I got a sharp one. Um, yeah, I'll put it up on the screen now so you can see. just saw a couple of roe deer off in the field to my right that was awesome uh, we just came around the corner and sue was like oh dear she saw them first um they were about mm, 
50, maybe a bit more meters away. Um, they seemed to know that we were here. Very shy, very alert. They stuck around for about a minute or two and then trotted off um, to the other side of the field, out of sight. Uh, I did get some shots, let me see. So yeah, wide open, f5.6. One 125th of a second. Um, I think I started off at 1 250th and then dropped down to 1 125th. And the ISO was floating around 90. Yeah, they're a bit too far away for the shot to be amazing, but I still think it'll make a nice shot. Hopefully I got one of them sharp. Here it is. But yeah, it's our first time seeing deer here, so it's good to know that they're around. We sort of thought they would be, because this area does seem perfect for deer. Lots of long grass, bits of water here and there, little, little streams and ditches. Huh, so a pretty weird thing, you can see this fence behind me. This is like an enclosure with a load of pheasants inside, at least I think that's what they are. Um, obviously I can't really say they're wild, I took a bit of video, but not really going to try and get any pictures or anything because it's not super exciting to photograph things through a fence like you're at a zoo but still pretty funny and pretty random <laughs> We're a little lost. Well, we're not lost. We know where we are. It's just, it's kind of like a mismatched grid of fields and we're trying to navigate our way to the other bridge, which will take us back over the M3 and uh, back to the station where we came from, making sure that my audio doesn't mess up. So if you remember in my last video, um, I had some problems with the audio. My mic got disconnected. Um, so to give a bit more backstory, when I started this channel I bought a DJI Osmo Pocket which um, at the time was brand new and it's just like, I'm holding it right now in my hand so you can't see it but I'll put up a picture or something, it's just like a tiny little handheld vlogging camera which has 4K and 120fps, it's stabilised, it's a gimbal um, and it's absolutely perfect for vlogging and you know, I, w I already carry one big camera around and sometimes other lenses and stuff. I didn't really want to be carrying a another big camera like a GH5 or a Sony or something around. So I picked up the Osmo Pocket and I really like it. Um, the only problem is that the audio isn't very good. It's fine if you're just standing around in a quiet area, but if there's any wind, sometimes like just holding it will um, mess with the mics as well. So you get this kind of rustling, like handling noise. Um, so I knew that at some point I wanted to use an external microphone and DJI promised that the Osmo Pocket, one of its accessories, would be a 3.5 millimeter jack adapter that plugs into the bottom and gives you the ability to plug in a microphone. So I thought, great, I'll, I'll just get that. The problem is, at the time, it wasn't out yet. So what I did in the meantime was I just my phone has no headphone jack, it's a Pixel 3 XL Why is it on? but it does have a USB type C port on the bottom and in the box it comes with an adapter that you can plug in which then gives you a 3.5mm jack so basically along with that adapter I could plug a lavalier microphone into my phone and then I downloaded an app and I could record audio onto my phone and it sounded way better than the audio from the Osmo Pocket. So that was fine for a while, but it turns out that a USB-C connector isn't actually that reliable. It can get pulled out, it can not get fully pulled out, but it can like dislodge slightly and then stop the recording. And I had this happen a few times. Um, I even got the phone replaced because it kept happening. Um, they, like it was a fault with the USB-C port 
they sent me a new one then it happened again um, and on my last vlog the same thing happened uh, the trouble is the adapter for the DJI Osmo Pocket still like seven months later still isn't out yet so in the end I caved and I decided to buy a audio recorder I'll show you which one I got here it is it's a Sony UX 560 I think and this thing is amazing it's tiny um, I also tried the Zoom H1n which is really good but it's a lot bigger it's a lot bulkier it has separate batteries that you need to charge this thing I just like it so much it's so small the sound quality is good it's just so small and thin I can just chuck it in my pocket have the lav mic um, on my collar like I have now yeah I've been loving it so far and it has a built-in battery which is nice so I can charge it on the go I don't have to worry about keeping batteries charged or bringing extra batteries and the, probably one of the best things about it is this USB port just pops right out so you can plug this in, charge it, transfer files without any extra accessories. Would highly recommend this to anyone else who's doing a similar format of YouTube to me where you're just mainly like recording yourself and you need something reliable. And it has internal memory as well so you don't even need to buy a, a memory card whereas the Zoom H1n you have to buy a memory card and then you have to plug in a cable to a computer to transfer the files or take the memory card out and then plug the memory card into an adapter and then plug that into a SD card reader and then plug that into the computer whereas the Sony has you know a USB port and it just plugs straight in so workflow wise it's so much better the fact that I can have this in my pocket and not even notice it's there and it has like a little hold switch so that none of the buttons work is great hopefully my audio is fine in this video otherwise uh, I'll look a bit silly um, yeah anyway let's keep going because we're almost at the bridge yeah I hope some of you guys are interested in this audio stuff because I'm a bit of a geek and it interests me but I have no idea about anyone else on this channel uh, which way is it and on top of all that the Sony ICD UX 560 is cheaper than the Zoom H1n and you don't need a memory card and that's a frog oh hey buddy Uh, I got distracted by a frog um, got some shots of it I'll put them up if they're any good but yeah basically the Sony's cheaper you don't need an SD card you can buy one if you want to expand the storage you don't need a cable you don't need batteries and all you need is a lav mic and I'd recommend the Rode Smart Lav Plus with an adapter so that you can plug it in I'll put a link to all that below if you're interested I think this is gonna be like a go-to setup for youtubers so small, so nice, so light, and nice reliable audio. Okay, here we are, we're at the bridge. So this is it. So we're back over on our side of the M3 now. We kind of looked at Google Maps and realized that we're quite far away from Fleet Station, which is where we were gonna go. So we, it might actually be quicker for us to just walk home. Um, I mean, it's probably quicker to go to Fleet Station and then get a train. The trouble is we might have to wait for a while for the train to turn up because they only go every hour. I mean, yeah, we've been walking all day anyway. It's uh, a couple more miles, a few hundred extra calories and our food when we get home should taste all the better because of it. Right Sue? Fajitas, here we come. <laughs> Fajitas, here we come, yeah. It's really hard to get you in the frame, it's annoying. I'm too short. <laughs> no, it's because this tracks my face too much. So the sun is officially set now and you can see the moon behind me. Looks really nice. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to be about the end of the vlog. We're just on our way back home. 
and it's been quite a long day we've been up on our feet for a long time so looking forward to getting home and relaxing and having some food like this video if you liked it hit subscribe and ring the notification bell because just because you're subscribed to me doesn't mean you'll always see my videos if you ring the notification bell then you'll be notified every time I post a video it's like after a long day you kind of just want to get home it's like there could be a deer standing over there and it's just like pff, just need to get home all right see ya